Good morning, everyone. It's a beautiful, crisp Sunday. Excellent weather to be out in the garden. And I know it's been a while since I've given you guys a little tour, so let's get this update going. So the corn is just about maxed out. Every single plant has tasseled and is either in the process of forming ears or just starting to. See, I've got this one here that's looking pretty nice. It's been well pollinated. You can tell the silks here are starting to dry. The ear is starting to swell up with some nice kernels. Here we've got a smaller one that isn't silking very well. I'm not sure what's going on there, but not every plant's a winner with, with this sort of ornamental variety, or just corn in general. Not every plant's going to give you the nicest ears, but you hope for at least a handful. This one here is very large. That's at least a foot long, and it still has to swell up. Some of these plants are very tall, and I'm hoping they give me at least two ears, but so far I only see one ear per plant. This guy, for example, that's at least 12 feet tall. It's over the peak of the barn roof there, but I only see one ear on it. It actually almost blew over the other day in the winds. But they're supporting one another. That's uh, one of the things about corn is you want to plant it fairly dense. So even if your plants aren't completely sturdy, they can sort of support one another, so to speak, when the going gets tough. Are some of my tomatoes that have been coming in now for the past two weeks. We've just been continuously harvesting tomatoes. Very, very yummy. This is my uh, one of my better boys. This leaf looks a little blighty. I should probably at least pinch it off. This is the Cherokee Purple. Didn't do as well. It only has one fruit set, and they're not that large. Actually, it has a couple more down here, which is strange. Those haven't even really made much progress, it seems. But my first time growing this variety, and they're kind of packed in here with the corn and the beans, sort of you know, a lot of competition in this garden this year. I wouldn't recommend planting so many different things as I did, at least so close together, but the better boys are doing well. I've harvested at least four or five from this plant, and it's still growing up. I might top it, though, to allow these to get a bit stronger, but the beans are actually still producing. We just picked a handful yesterday. We've been getting a lot of rain, so... They've had the uh, moisture and the nutrients to just keep going. It's probably the fifth or sixth harvest from these plants. These are actually called a uh, bush bean. It's a bush bean called Provider, and that name certainly, <laughs> certainly proved itself. So I highly recommend any sort of green bean or pole bean. I'm not really too experienced growing pole beans, but green bush beans, very, very excellent very easy to grow and they'll continuously produce for a very long time. Unfortunately my cucumber vine seems to be completely fried. We got about four or five cucumbers out of it and there's still one right there. But it doesn't look like we're gonna get much more out of this. I'm not really quite sure what happened. It never got mildew. Um, like I said I think it had a lot to do with just overcrowding, too much competition, not enough sunlight. This corn is just towering over it. So yeah, lesson learned this year. I really kind of overplanted this back garden. My volunteer gourd here in the compost pile is going crazy. I probably should cut some of these suckers off, but all of them seem to have gourds on them, even though they're not they're not really taken off too well. This this is a pretty problematic plant. I mean, I didn't intend to to grow it. It was just a stroke of luck. So I'm pretty much just letting it go crazy, seeing what it does. Now here up at the patio bed, things have been very successful. These sunflowers have just been exploding with blooms. A lot of them almost fell over in the rain. Um, I had to do quite a bit of tying here. I put a stake in, and this is also tied to the trellis, which is being counterweighted by these sunflowers over here. Very uh, sort of overly complex situation due to just how many sunflowers there are. 
and the fact that they're starting to get so top heavy the sun's not out very well but you kind of see just how many heads are on that one sunflower these gourds are doing very very well they're still producing still getting uh, new female flowers being pollinated got the gourds trellising up the sunflowers here this one could probably be harvested soon but you can leave these on the vine until the vine is completely dead and they will continue to get color and become you know sturdier you got this one further up still has to get its mature colors but it's looking very very nice but wow back to just how much these things are still producing I didn't even see this two more back-to-back -back female flowers on the same vine as this one I think these are gonna be those uh, little yellow pumpkins again getting a lot of those but we're still getting some variety over here got this funky looking one on the ground never seen one like that before and we've got this guy here like a sort of green striped orange yellow pumpkin pretty cool got the tomatoes here this tomato plant is pretty much broken because there's gourds hanging from it <laughs> uh, they really kind of got out of control but for how many gourd vines there were I managed to keep it pretty thinned out got another guy coming in there also got this white pumpkin here pretty neat I highly recommend growing these things they're so much fun especially if you have like a variety pack of seeds or you just throw a bunch of gourds you bought into the ground in the fall they'll grow in the spring and you just never know what you might get See, here is the little variety pack that I've harvested so far like I said a lot of these yellow pumpkins got an orange one there I'm just calling them pumpkins because I don't really know what else they resemble. They're like mini pumpkins. Nice and tiny. They're so adorable. And then this is that one of those, uh, like, I don't know what you want to call this. It's sort of like a pumpkin. It's very, very spherical, but it's got a nice striping pattern to it. And last but not least, here is something I don't think I've showed you guys outside of the giant sunflower growing tutorial. This is my mammoth Russian sunflower that I have growing in my front yard all by itself. I like to do this every year. It's just really fun. We used to have a tree in this spot and you can never get a new tree to grow, so I figured why not grow a new tree every year. <laughs> Essentially that's what these things are. They get so huge. This one isn't as huge as I hoped it to be, but they always turn out very nice in this spot. The head has been pretty much fully pollinated. You can see some seeds coming in now. Very big. It's about a foot in diameter. That is it for this week's garden update. If you would like to know how to grow one of these, or you just want some helpful tips on getting your sunflowers to be extra giant, I will link my tutorial in the description below. But yeah, that's about it. Hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more garden updates and trick tips. Take care, guys.